The remaining funds not used will be returned to the district. Recommendation. The Joint Budget Committee voted 8 to 0 in favor. The JMA Board voted 9 with 1 abstention. The Alton School Board recommends 36361 and 69 cents by a vote of 5 to 0. The Alton Budget Committee recommends 36,361 and 69 cents by a vote of 5 to 2. Who moves the motion? I do. Mr. Adropolis, second. I do. Linda Gosens. Any discussion on Article 20? Yes. This is a special warrant article. Any funds not used in fiscal year uh, 2013 go directly back to the taxpayers. Funds cannot be used for other purposes besides for utility expenses. Thank you. Any further discussion? All, all in favor, uh, do I have a motion to restrict reconsideration of Article 20? So moved. Chris Roger off the second. Yes. Linda Dawson. Uh, all in favor of restricting reconsideration of Article 20, raise your cards, please. All opposed? Article 20 is restricted regarding reconsideration. Article 20, at this point, would you people like to take a five minute break? Or would you rather keep going? We're going to take a five minute break. We have a few people left. Five minutes. Article 21, folks, special warrant article, to see if the school district will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $25,000 to be added to a non-lapsing capital reserve fund under the provisions of RSA 35-1-C, known as the Prospect Mountain High School General Maintenance Fund, said fund to be used for the purpose of meeting the cost of unanticipated general maintenance expenses that may arise at Prospect Mountain High School. Said sum representing 50% of the total monies, $50,000, and further that this appropriation shall be contingent upon Alton 50% and Bonstead 50%, school districts adopting this article and raising and appropriating their respective sum of money, and further to, to designate the Prospect Mountain High School Board as the agent to expend from the fund. A detailed report of all expenditures from the General Maintenance Capital Reserve Fund shall be made annually by the respective school boards of Alton and Bonstead and published with their annual reports. Recommendations. Joint Budget Committee voted 8 to 0 in favor. JMA Board voted 9 with 1 abstention. The Alton School Board recommends 25,000 by a vote of 5 to 0. The Alton Budget Committee recommends 25,000 dollars by a vote of four to three. Who moves the motion? I do. Jeff Saint C a second. I do. Linda Goosens. Who would care to speak in favor of the item? Thank you, Mr. Moder Moderator. This article uh, adds to the existing general maintenance fund, fund that we already have here at the high school. Uh, it's something that the board has been trying to build up over the last few years as uh, Prospect Mountain the actual building has aged uh, since 2004 when it opened. Capital reserve projects are funded 50-50, so each town pays 50% toward the total cost of capital reserve projects <coughs> versus the annual operating budget is raised based on per pupil cost of the previous, uh, based on the per pupil percentage from each town, but capital reserve items are raised at 50% each. Currently in this account, uh, there's $70,555. Thank you. <coughs> Any further discussion on Article 21? Hearing, yeah. hearing us. Yes. yes. As one of the minority in the budget committee, I'd like to say that the reason that uh, minority of the budget committee voted no was because we were told that this fund was used to do the wells. We don't believe that was a maintenance issue. We think that's a capital. Um, item that should have been brought before the board. 
Anyone care to address that? Chuck Stewart, the school's business administrator for Prospect Mountain High School, will talk about what, what has and what has not come out of that fund. Good afternoon. Um, last year, we used the fund to repair the teacher's bathroom. Um, this past summer, we again used the fund to explore for water. We were unsuccessful. Currently, we are using the fund uh, to fix the fire suppression system. You may have heard about that in the paper. Uh, we discovered that there was contamination in the line. The state fire marshal's office has required us to do a flushing project, which we will complete uh, this spring. Does that answer your question? Well, I guess. I guess the issue is what is a maintenance item and what is a capital project? Um, the wells are a capital project. I, I think that anyone would agree with that. It's not maintaining. It would be the same as saying, it. I know it's to maintain the lawn, but that would be the same as a tractor to mow the grass. And I, I don't believe that the, at the time the board couldn't answer that. The search for water was considered uh, a capital maintenance item because we are not capable of irrigating our fields as best we could. Uh, the well that we currently have uh, has a restricted flow in it, it's only about 30 gallons a minute. We were looking for an additional source of water so that we could uh, properly irrigate the fields. When we have a dry spring or a dry summer, we have enormous trouble uh, generating enough cycles out of the irrigation system in order to do that. The search for water was an attempt to solve that problem. Unfortunately, it didn't work out, uh, and we're exploring other avenues. Any further discussion? Hearing or seeing none, do we have a motion to restrict reconsideration of Article 21? So moved. Moved, seconded? Yes. Second. Uh, all in favor of restricting reconsideration of Article 21, please raise your cards. All opposed? Article 21 is restricted regarding reconsideration. Based on the amendment we did earlier, uh, we'll go back now to Article 3. Pardon me? Article 3. To see if the school district will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $18,800,615 for renovation, reconstruction, repairs, and construction of an addition to the Alton Central School and for furnishing and equipment, equipping the school, and to authorize the issuance of not more than $18,042,000 of bonds or notes in accordance with the provisions of the Municipal Finance Act. RSA 33, and to authorize the school board to issue and negotiate such bonds or notes and to determine the rate of interest thereon. Furthermore, to authorize the withdrawal of $19,832.20 from the Water Heated Capital Reserve Funds, $239,011.33 from the Fire Suppression Capital Reserve Fund, $25,741.22 from the Security Safety Expendable Trust Fund, 
$446.18 from the Electric Service Upgrade Expendable Trust Fund, $31,103.52 from the Bathroom refurb Refurbishment Expendable Trust Fund, $1,839.23 from the Window Replacement Expendable Trust Fund, $440.600 $440,666.06 from the Building and Grounds Expendable Trust Fund with the balance of $18,042,000 and further to raise and appropriate an additional sum of $410,956.67 for for the first year interest payment on the bond. The Alton School Board recommends $18,800,615 by a vote of 5 to 0. The Alton Budget Committee does not recommend $18,800,615 by a vote of 2 to 5. Who moves the motion? I move the motion. Terry Noyes, second. Second. Christian Adropoulos. Do we have an amendment? We have an amendment. This just changes the amount. Where's the change? The amount of money coming from the water heater capital reserve fund. I mean the fire, the fire suppression fund. Sorry. Coming from the fire suppression. Okay. Yep. amendment here to change one of the items out of capital reserve funds. If you look on, on your existing article, it says it's $239,011.33 from the fire suppression capital reserve fund. Uh, that's being amended to change that uh, number to $238,986.59 from the fire suppression capital reserve fund. Uh, so it's about... Uh, $24. Twenty-four dollar change, folks. I, I and that was just a addition problem. Yes. Uh, is there any discussion on the amendment? Yes. No discussion on the amendment. Uh, hearing none, all in favor of the amendment, raise your cards, please. All opposed? The amendment passes. Is there any discussion on Article 3? Yes. Yes. Um, we have, I'd like to recognize Mr. Steve Renner from the Alton Central Schools Buildings and Grounds Committee. Uh, he's the chairman of the PR subcommittee. He'd like to speak to this, please. With your permission, Mr. Moderator, can you come to the podium? You can come up here. Steve Renner? Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, as, it was, as I was introduced, I'm a member of the Buildings and Grounds Committee and have been for a few years now. And despite the challenges that we've heard about in the last couple of days, we remain optimistic that the all voters will, will still continue to support this project and that we can move forward if we're able to get the three-fifths majority on this warrant article to be able to move ahead with a potential special meeting at a later date to uh, address the legal issues that have taken place so thus far. But let me begin by telling you that the proposal that the Buildings and Grounds Committee made to the school board is the result of a couple of years of compromise, uh, both among the members of the board and by taking feedback from the community about this project. I think we would all like to see a new building in Alton, but the financial uh, state right now does not allow us to put that sort of proposal together in a reasonable way. 
Also, those surveyed indicated that they would like the school to remain on its existing site, so renovating the existing structure uh, seems like the best option right now in the most affordable way possible. Bond rates are very low right now. There are competitive bids out there uh, to, to be had. And although materials have not decreased, cost of materials have not decreased given the economy, um, uh, our estimates are that further increases in building materials of only 5% will add $350,000 to this project. So the time to do this project is now for all of those reasons. I'll begin with, we're going over a few of the site plan highlights uh, of this project. First would be to create a safe, sheltered pick up and drop off area behind the school in a newly uh, created parking lot that would add almost, uh, almost double the available parking that's currently there. Along with the project, it would be to grade and irrigate the athletic fields to reduce the, the overall maintenance cost of that uh, and improve the conditions of those uh, outdoor facilities. Moving to the floor plan highlights, the first concern of, this, of the committee was to enhance the safety of the building. Uh, it was felt that eliminating the modular units was one of those priorities. In order to do that, the school needs to be expanded. By taking down the 1950s wing, which is one of the oldest portions of this building, and replacing it with a three-story structure, we can accommodate all four of the existing modular classrooms that incorporate eight classrooms. Uh, the third floor, depending upon what would happen with the gym article, would also be required, part of that would be required to house classrooms used to expand the existing cafeteria. Uh, the other new addition would be a combined media center for both the elementary and the middle, middle school to share uh, in the front of the building. There would be some moving around of offices uh, to centralize the administration so that uh, they can act more efficiently and aren't as spread out throughout the building and would also be useful to address the safety concerns. Uh, right now, this building is not secure. I think most of us who are parents are aware of that, that we can come and go as we please throughout the day. As an educator for a nonprofit organization who goes into schools throughout New England, there is not a single school that I have been to that I'm able to walk into aside from Walton Central School without having to go through a secured, monitored entrance where I need to sign in. We feel that it's important to address that concern uh, as well as eliminating the modular units. 35% of the estimated project cost would go towards this newly constructed portion of the school, including the media center and this three-story building. The other 65% of the projects deal with the facility upgrades. This would include new wiring outlets and energy efficient light fixtures throughout the building, adding double paned low R rated windows to increase thermal insulation, as well as improve natural lighting throughout the school. Upgrading plumbing and trans, uh, transferring to water conserving fixtures. Right now there are toilets in the building that have been in there since the 1950s that use five to six gallons per flush. None of us probably have those in our home. They're no longer recommended and probably not even available. Reducing our water consumption to using a toilet that say uses only 1.2 gallons uh, seems to make sense. There are also a zero ventilation in the building right now because of the piecemeal fashion that has been constructed. So installing an HVA system that would allow for consistent and comfortable climate control and provide ventilation throughout the building would also be essential and would be, renovate, would be remedied in this renovation project. Replacing rafters and the aging roofs. Um, right now, in the last two years, since 2008 through last winter, the school district spent $28,000 shoveling the roof. I don't feel that that's a good use of taxpayer money and moving forward to be able to, to put in rafters and a roof that can handle a reasonable amount of snow where we live in New England certainly seems appropriate. Lastly would be the aesthetic and functional upgrades to all of the classrooms and offices. Now, of course, this is not just about the building, this is about education. Healthy indoor air quality, natural lighting, thermal comfort have all been linked to improved educational outcomes. Uh, as I outlined in the specifics of this project, 
All of these can be addressed, and we already see that an increase in our students' score. So just imagine if the students are thinking about adding numbers, not adding or subtracting layers as they move from classroom to classroom, because one room is 80 degrees and another room is 65. Lastly, expanding the cafeteria will en enhance the academic flexibility by reducing the number of necessary lunch periods from four to three. There are a few additional options which will be just discussed with later warrant articles. Those would be the geothermal climate control and the addition of a gymnasium. Um, Kingswood High School has incorporated geothermal into its new facility and has seen a 40% reduction in energy costs in the first year of uh, using that system. Conservative estimates show that the system would begin paying for it, would com completely pay for itself in about 15 years. Those are using conservative escalators for both electrical and uh, oil costs. Moving on to the cost of the project and the tax impact. Uh, these estimates are put together based on a 4% bond rate, which is a con very conservative estimate, and it's likely that the, the bond would be at a, a rate lower than that. However, looking ahead at the most expensive year of the bond repayment would occur in 2014, and would re result in a in $1.35 uh, portion of our school taxes. From there, it declines as bond payments are not level paid. However, taking into that, uh, that the Prospect Mountain bond is going to be retired this summer, uh, looking at the next slide, you can see that there's a net effect here that we're not going to see an increase of $1.35, all other things being equal in the school budget. We would actually see a slight decrease in the first year, and then over the next two years, some increases as we get into that uh, larger portion of the bond payment. So in the end, at the most expensive year of the bond in 2014, we'd see a net increase of 67 cents over what we're currently paying. To make this a real world translation, we can move to the last slide. That 67 cents means that if your property is valued at $100,000, you would see an increase in your taxes of roughly $67 or $1.29 per week. The median home price in Alton is $278,000. That would lead to an increase in $186,000, or I'm sorry, $186.26. This comes out divided by 52 to $3.58 per week. This is an affordable project. That's a gallon of gas or a number one coffee and two donut combo at Dunkin' Donuts per week. That, that would, this is using the median home price. Just as a reminder, it's been a while probably since people have talked about medians and modes. Median is the middle of a distribution regardless of how skewed the tails of that distribution are. So for half of the homeowners, of the property owners in Alton, it would be less than $3.58 per week to complete all three phases of this renovation the major renovation, adding geothermal, and adding the gymnasium. Again, the, the Buildings and Grounds Committee remains hopeful that the voters in Alton will continue to support this project and allow it to move beyond uh, sort of the glitch that we've encountered these last couple of days by coming out and giving your support at the polls. Thank you. Thank you. Any discussion over here? Just a moment. The Alton Budget Committee is charged with looking at the economic and fiscal uh, feasibility of this particular project. I think we're all in agreement that the school is in need of dire renovation and our new school. There's no question about that. And that is absolutely not disputed. We believe that this is not the day, this is not the time to do this. We don't believe that we are, are in, uh, are possibly coming up to a critical situation where a brand new school has to be immediately renovated. We have a number of, we have a number of concerns that we believe that have to, have to still and yet to be addressed. First of all, there are taxpay taxpayers who are looking forward to tax relief from the bond that we've been paying off for the last, I guess, 10 years for the Prospect Mountain High School. They were looking forward to this tax relief 
and there would be no tax relief going forward. The amount of taxation that it affects an individual, whether that person is in a $278,000 home or in a $50,000 home, it will affect everybody different. We are responsible for representing all the taxpayers, not those who are, even if the majority can't afford it, we still have a responsibility to look after all the taxpayers. Going forward, in the past, with the Prospect Mountain High School, the state had picked up somewhere between 30 and 40 percent of the building costs. That possibility does not exist going forward. It's not, certainly not in the foreseeable future. That may change, but there's no indication. Um, we also don't believe in the demographic constraints that were generated by the school, by the school board. The school board originally targeted 840 students and reduced that number to 725. What in fact has been happening is that uh, since the high school was built, the, um, pop the student population has been contracting at a 4% compounded rate, and the state of New Hampshire in the last 10 years, has, the student population has in fact dropped 8.2%. We believe that there are significant bidding issues. Um, the uh, budget committee was concerned that the architect was not put out to bid, which is a potential $1.1 million expense. We, are, uh, we were concerned about how the project is being initially handled with the budgetary constraints. If you go to build a building, a commercial building, a home, you go to the architect, you simply say, I need X amount of square feet, I would like to pay X amount of dollars. The architect was given no budgetary constraint. Build a school for 840 students, as an example. Build a school for 725 students. There was no budgetary constraint given to the architect. There's going to be a vacant third story on this building. That vacant third story is going to exist as very expensive storage space for a number of years until the school, which is being built for about 725 students, finally gets filled with 725 students. Now, the demographics could change tomorrow, but the trend is definitely there. The trend is not increased students, not in Alton, not in the state of New Hampshire, but a decrease, but a decrease in students. There was no, there's no plan B offered. What you have here is an $18 million project plus a $2 million gym plus a $1.7 million gym thermal heating unit. So we're really talking not $18 million. We're talking here a potential $22 million. And there's really no plan B for the voters to choose from. You either want a renovated new school, add 18 to 22 million, or you don't. There's nothing in the middle. What I, what I'd like to, what I also like to get across is, is that we are in favor of a new school at some time. We don't think that this economic environment Today, this is the time to saddle our, tax, saddle our taxpayers uh, with, with that burden. But it also, it is not the intention, and never will be the intention, of the budget committee to take that decision out of the hands of the voters. We had no intention of amending the um, uh, Warren Article to zero, as a matter of fact. We believe that it should go to the voters, to the voters to make, to decide. If, they, if the voters decide on a qualitative decision that no matter what the tax burden, we want to build a new school, that's fine. At least it's fine with me personally, and I'm sure it's fine with the majority of the people um, on the budget committee. Okay, but so we want this to go to the voters. We will do anything we can to make sure that it goes to the voters, but we still have a fiscal and economic obligation to take a look at the, the economics the numbers and make a recommendation how we feel about doing this project today. And that's why we didn't recommend it.
Pardon me? I can't hear you, I'm sorry. Yes. Tilling. I would like to ask if Mr. Miller is speaking as a budget committee uh, vice chair or as a citizen. All of the points that are being um, presented right now are actually exactly nearly verbatim from his article in this week's Bayside or from the community corner, which I believe he did not, and I would hope, not um, right on behalf of the entire budget committee. Well, and it is my question. understanding from the last budget committee me uh, meeting, the reason why this failed on the budget committee was because, in fact, this budget committee determined that the school board was not qualified to oversee the project. So that should actually be his explanation. Was uh, Mr. Miller speaking for your committee? Yes, he was. We uh, gave him, we sat down in a meeting discussed who would speak on which article and we gave him permission to speak on that article. Speak up to the committee. And in addition to everything he just said, yes, we are concerned about the management of the project. Any discussion? Mary, Mary B. Mary B. Longabaugh. Uh, yes, uh, people probably do want to see some relief in uh, their taxes and things like that. However, over many years, and I am 78 years old, over many years, I have seen costs continue to go up. Therefore, if you're talking about doing this project five or ten years from now, I hope I'm not around to have to take the burden because that's going to be very costly. I'd rather see people try to bite the bullet a little bit. But the one thing for me, as a parent and grandparent, I detest modulars. My Seattle grandchildren went through that situation and I didn't like it then, and I don't like seeing it at the Alton School. Those modulars are sitting out there and the kids are going back and forth. It's just not right. You put the addition on this building, you get the three floors, one floor, will take care of those four modulars, and that, to me, gets them under uh, secure conditions. The top floor, okay, but you put it on now because costs are going to go up. Let's just stop and really think about who we're most concerned about. It's the children, as far as I'm concerned. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Weston. Charles Weston, um, at one time my wife and I had served on the Building and Grounds Committee and we've been here over 12 years um, and have seen the growth of this school. At one time I was a former educator. Uh, it was necessary, and I believe it is necessary, having been through that school, that it does need to be replaced. Timing is everything. But I'm a little concerned with the way in which people are looking at this. I think we need to, first of all, decide, are we going to have a special meeting? Because right now, this is a straw poll, and it's mute to whatever we're going to say or do here today. So today, is at this point, on this, is only verbiage. What we need to know is, how soon are we going to have a special meeting, and when? Um, Would anyone care to address that? According to both the members of the board and the members of the budget committee that met yesterday, um, we can't hold a special meeting just because. We need a reason. And the budget committee has said that they did not want to take this away from the voters. What we need to do is to show that there's a reason to hold a special meeting and having three-fifths of the voters support this article. And any article after this, the Budget Committee has said that that would be indication to them that the voters support this. They then would consider the reason for going forward to a special meeting. We would then petition Superior Court for that purpose. So it is important that we consider this today and that we do not amend this article in any fashion other than to change that one number. 
then and we are obligated to have that special meeting before December 31st, correct? Correct. So when we see what the voters do with this on March 13th, if we get that three-fourths, I mean uh, three-fifths number, we then take that information and move to petition Superior Court for a special meeting to show that the voters do support this bond. Then I think it might be appropriate to have a straw poll here today to be put in the paper so that the public is aware of those people who turned out today to voice their opinion on the need or lack of need for this so that all the voters who then turn out to vote will have an understanding of what the people thought of it today. Thank you. Thank you. Would anyone care to address the fact of what are the odds of getting a special meeting if this happens? It's, uh, it's not a slam dunk, I don't think, so you should know that. In order to get a special meeting, we have to file a petition with the Superior Court. And we have to be able to convince the Superior Court that there are really good reasons not to wait until next year. Um, there, there are several criteria listed in the statute, and they include being able to establish um, a variety of reasons that, you, that it can't wait. Um, the statute talks about an emergency. It doesn't have to be a life or death emergency. It just has to be that you have a situation that's important to correct. For example, the fact that your building is not secure. Uh, any, uh, any respects in which the building does not comply with the building codes. Um, issues um, involving uh, classroom space, all that stuff. Those are, all, those are all things that we can say to the court, these are good reasons not to put this off for another year. Um, the, other, um, the other thing you have to be able to show is that you couldn't have dealt with it at the annual meeting, and that's where the mix-up uh, regarding the budget committee uh, not recommending the article and the, nobody apparently on the budget committee or the school board understood that that meant that you wouldn't have the authority to appropriate the money. So there are several things. They are basically excuses. Uh, sometimes you can get the court to go along and allow you to have the special meeting. Sometimes you can't. Uh, so we really don't know how it will turn out. but. Certainly, I think if the voters uh, make a strong showing at the polls in favor of the bond article, that can only help with the judge. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Weston, to answer your question regarding a straw vote today, uh, I don't think I have the authority to do that without notice to the community what we're voting on. Uh, it's not part of the Warren article today. I think it would be a great idea if we could all say, hey, we want this. But I think it has to be done at a different time if we want to do something like that. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, uh, Steve Renner again. Just a, a couple of comments. Uh, there are 23 approved subdivision building lots within a half a mile of my house that have not yet been built. People will come. So for me, thinking ahead of going from 600 to 725 students is not wasteful. It's forethought. It's preparation. It's considering that we live in an attractive area and that we all have reasons that we live here and other people will want to live here as well. I would prefer not to be in a position 10 years from now when the, when the economy is better, when there is another round of building in Alton, not to be in a position at that point that we've maxed out our building space because we couldn't prepare, because we couldn't have the foresight to proceed with that. On another note, I feel as a member of the Buildings Grounds Committee that this is this is plan D that we are getting right here today. Um, this is not plan A with no backup. This is the backup. Um, there have been numerous proposals put out in the last five to seven years. This committee has been hard at work going over. We spent months deciding, are we gonna build, do we wanna build new? Is it more realistic to renovate? Um, we spent a lot of time, a lot of effort, listened to a lot of people's opinions to get to this point. So you aren't getting a plan that has not been thought out and that there are no contingencies. This is the contingency. Thank you. Yes, sir. 
Hello again. My um, name is Lawrence Tilley. I'm a parent of two children currently in Alton. And uh, as was mentioned, um, this is not a new program. We actually have some paperwork and articles going back seven years from when discussions of what to do with our school has been going on. So for seven years, we've been trying to get the right decision made. And we're at a point right now where we have a very solid, which has had to been modified and backed off several times to get here, but a very solid recommendation. Um, the fire safety, the security, the comfort, you know, with, as mentioned earlier, moving from room to room in the school, it's tremendous differences. If you have to actually have a meeting at the school, you could be going in in the winter time into an 85 degree room and trying to sit in there for an hour having a conversation and not being you know, distracted by that. The um, item, one item that keeps being brought up again and again regarding the demographics is an empty third floor. If the plan of the school, excuse me, the um, choice of the voters is to not move forward with the gym addition and just do the basic renovation, that third floor is not empty. That third floor is required just to get rid of the modulars and bring the students in. I believe one, maybe two rooms in it would be unoccupied. Other than that, it will start as almost a fully occupied building with our current demographics. Now, yes, if the gym also passes and they do the restructuring, that does change, but I think that needs to be aware and important uh, point. One other item is, I think everybody has acknowledged that it's not a matter of if, but when this has to be done. The economy is brought up as a reason not to. The economy should also be looked at as a reason to. I think anybody here who's either financed or refinanced in the last few years has benefited from the low interest rates. On Friday, the Dow ended at its highest point since the crash in 2008. We can't assume that two years from now we will still have low interest rates. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, my name is Dave St. Cyr. When I first moved to this town back in 1994, we looked at the school scenario. In 1995, I became involved with the Village and Grounds Committee, then who was looking at a new high school. That was when we put out a proposal for approximately $395,000 to buy the land out behind where McDonald's and Hannaford is right now. At that time, the townspeople said that was not an appropriate expense. And since that, I've been involved in buildings committees for a number of years. Unfortunately, I got off the building committee uh, after the last Twombly defeat. So I've been frustrated with what the town has tried to do with regards to schools. This, to me, represents the most reasonable alternative. And I've been part of putting several of those alternatives forward to the townspeople. I have made the presentations that this young man made up here before to this town in a, in a school district meeting as well as a deliberative session. I know where he's coming from when it comes time to say, we need, this is an alternative. This is not the first answer. We have done this time and time again. Please, it's unfortunate that this Warren article ended up the way it did. I offered a proposal to, to add the verbiage and I'm told we can't do it. If we could do it, we could add the verbiage and this thing would not have occurred. But I can, say, I can say, honestly say that I will strongly support, as I have in the past, any reasonable <coughs> addition to make Alton Central a better school. I've had three children go through that school, and I'll be honest with you, there are, there's what I call uh, uh, hallways to nowhere. When I went down there as part of a buildings and grounds committee to, to investigate that school and see what was going on, I walked down a hallway I hadn't seen, and my kids were in the high school. It was something I just never, you know, again, it was a hallway to nowhere as far as I was concerned. That school is the result of seven different additions. You'll find the plaques in there, okay? It's been piecemealed since the, the mid-50s. We need to do something drastic. We need to do something now. To me, this is the right time to do it. Regardless, all right, we can afford it. We can afford it. And I firmly believe, let's just like I said, I would rather pay some now than pay a whole lot later on. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Bolster. Thank you, uh, Rep Representative Peter Bolster. Uh, as Representative St. Cyr, who up here is sitting as a school board member, uh, and I 
both are aware of, and our discussions with uh, people at the very high level of the uh, Education Committee uh, in the House, uh, looking at the uh, future of state funding, uh, things look kind of bleak in terms of the process of us as a fairly, as a town with a high tax base compared to towns like Barnstead and New Durham and other places that have uh, very low tax bases, we will be at a tremendous disadvantage when the next round uh, and the next system comes up to determine uh, state building aid. Therefore, holding out for the hope that somewhere down the line in two years, three years, four years, five years, ten years, we will ever be able to get what we used to be able to get in this town for state building aid is a fairly dim possibility. Initially, my thought was, not now, let's wait a year or two until the state funding situation gets worked out and, and go ahead. Now, seeing what the potential is for the future, we cannot plan on state building aid in the near future, uh, and, the, and maybe in the long future. But looking at the low interest rates and the low cost of labor, which has been evidenced in our town in the addition on the police station that we just put on, where we were able to get bids that were incredibly lower than what was anticipated. And when the access road to Manchester Airport <coughs> was bid out, which is now open, that came in at 80% of what the estimate was a, couple, a year or two ago, and that would be about the same today. So the tremendous savings that we would make today, if we did it now, would far outstrip anything we could ever expect from the state in the future. And then we would have the use of a building, we would deal with the security issues, because th there's no doubt about that. I have no children in the school, I have no grandchildren in the school, and I probably never will, because they don't live in this area. And so I have no vested interest. But I do have a vested interest in the young people and the parents in this school, in this town, feeling secure, particularly in those modulars. Now, we live in a wonderful town where a lot of us don't lock our doors, and it's a wonderful place to be. But there's no telling what might happen in this small town, like has happened in other small towns that didn't expect something that was going to happen when a madman decides to do something. And therefore, we need to deal with those issues. Now, if we build a building that's bigger than we need now, that gives us wonderful options. There's a lot of arguments and discussions, and I've had them with school board members, about how we could use that additional space in the meantime to bring in revenue to pay for the building. But if we don't build the building, that, that discussion is academic. There are an awful lot of ways that we could use excess space uh, in, in revenue producing. I think, I've been on the Buildings and Grounds Committee for about five years now, and to say that this is a high in the sky idea, there's been tremendous discussions, a lot of wrestling over this over the years, and changes trying to adapt to the, uh, to the advice we've gotten and the advice from the community. It seems to me that now is the time to move forward because we cannot build this any cheaper then we can build it now. And we'll, in the long term, we'll be saving millions of dollars over the 20 or 30 year period if we do it now. Thank you. Hi there. Chris Tarjaropoulos. I started out as a Buildings and Grounds Committee member and um, went on to school board from there. It's a project I've had a, an interest in for quite a while. I've got two children. My husband and I have two children in the school. Um, I want to thank the Budget Committee for working with the Alton School Board over the past few days with the situation we've had with this Warren article. I also appreciate our administrative staff for going to the extra lengths they have to keep this alive for us. This isn't dead. I'm not willing to let it go, even if I have to have a white knuckle grip around it the whole time. And addressing some of uh, Mr. Miller's points that he spoke of from the podium, I don't have the school board's permission to do that. We haven't had a meeting. I haven't presented this to them, so I'm doing it from here. This is from myself. You know, as uh, 
a quality of school, a quality school means quality of life in a quality place. Voting for this would be a vote for the for, of confidence for this little town in the Lakes region. You know, considering what Mr. Bolster just shared with you about things, other things to consider is the cost of building materials. They're not going down. They're not going down anytime soon. They're going up. Building now means we can employ locally. We can have money here in the community. This would create jobs. It would also help with the utilizing local businesses, something that I know our board believes in. In 2006, the Alton School District asked for a K-8 long-range facility planning review report from the New England School Development Council. The report stated, in some respects, the Alton Central School has been well maintained. However, partly due to changes in educational programs that have been developed since the original design and construction of the school and the age of the facility, the school is or, is or at over capacity. At the time of that report, there were approximately 587 students enrolled. That's fiscal year 2005-2006. The proposed renovation is not about student population at this time. It's about, the, it's about the need to rehabilitate and update school spaces which do not support 21st century educational programs. There is also the need to address the lack of, of equity in facilities and programs, including handicap accessibility. The need to consider space for a full day kindergarten. The need to address enrollment size, which currently requires dependence upon a te on temporary modular classrooms. Um, I'd like to share a, a statistic with, the, uh, with you all. The um, State and County Quick Facts, which is actually part of the U.S. Census Bureau, Belknap County is one of the fastest growing counties in New Hampshire. Um, they saw a growth of the New Hampshire, uh, they saw a growth of 6.7% from 2000 to 2010, whereas the, the state average was 6.5. There is a difference. Belknap County is a desirable county to live in. Alton, certainly being a, a gem of Lake Winnipesaukee, is a, a great town to live in. Um, Mr. Miller has brought forward several times his concerns about the bid policy for the architect. I've addressed this many, many times between newspaper articles, between here on the floor. At what point does it is not a good practice to go out to bid for an architect sink in? It, you, it's not a practice you do. Would anyone here want to live in a house built by the lowest bidding architect? I would hope not. Would we want that for our children in our school? I would absolutely hope not. Um, there's a discussion about Plan B not being brought forward. As Mr. Renner shared, this seems like Plan D at least. You know, we've certainly looked at all our plans. It's been felt that a Plan B confuses the voters. It, it also makes it look like we're not prepared and we don't stand behind our decision. We absolutely stand behind our decision. There's also the concern that there is no one on the current school board who has any experience managing a project over $10,000, let alone $22 million. The wrong answer is that's what we hire a project manager for. That's not the job of a school board. That's not what I ran for the school board for, and far, far be it for me to micromanage at that level. When we have had projects in the school, when we replaced roof rafters, updated our windows and bathrooms, we hired a clerk of the works. It was the prudent thing to do. You hire an expert to help you make prudent decisions in the management of money. You don't need to be a lawyer. You don't need to be a construction foreman. You don't need to be a nurse. You don't need to be a curriculum director to be a school board member. You need to be somebody who cares passionately about your community and wants to serve and help. That's what we're here for. That's what we do. Why would anyone place the responsibility of any project, no matter the size, on the shoulders of an individual elected to serve the community as representatives and foremen? As far as what we have done for what we're qualified for, for monies we've managed in our lives, you haven't looked at my resume. You have no idea what I've done. That's not your business and that's not what I'm here for. I'm here to represent my constituents. I'm tired of the finger pointing and the accusations and the mismanagement of positions. It is well beyond time to retire the finger pointing and to get to work managing quality improvements for our school district. I've never once said we were perfect. I've never once said I was perfect. But I've always said that we could always make improvements and we've always had wonderful things to celebrate as, with our school as we have today. Now is the time to focus on the Alton Central School and to create a safe environment that inspires each child to excel.
Thank you. Any additional uh, discussion on Article 3? Yes, Ruth. Ruth Massier, I really don't like speaking publicly, as you probably all know. And I'm not going to say a lot. But there are a lot of people here that remember, as I do, when that big gray Victorian building was replaced by the 1950 edition and all the ones that came after it. And you know, I'm sometimes thought of as a non-spender. Well, I just want to say that uh, all the years I served on the building committees and everything else that's gone through all the years, and I'm 81, I'm older than she was. So I say now is the time. Let's not waste any more time and money. And, and Yes, sir. I'm sorry, I'm very sick. <clears throat> Going hoarse in my service to this community. <clears throat> oh, I'm Richard Brown, uh, Alton taxpayer. I feel like Stephen Wright. Um, I guess there's been reference to Mr. Moderator transparency in government. So, in the interest of transparency, yes, I'm a teacher. I teach at Alton Central School. I wrote the letter that's up there um, be on the table behind the cameraman. Please, please avail yourselves of one on your way out. Uh, being sick, I I'm not my least eloquent right now. Um, and in terms of the transparent obstructionism that I see perennially in this town at meetings like this and elsewhere, I just wanted to say that, th yes, I agree. I can add nothing substantive nor material to any of the arguments that have been put forth to support this specific renovation project. It's not my gig, but I agree with all of it, and, and it, my lack of confidence is not in my school board's ability to manage this type of activity. That lack of confidence lies elsewhere, so I just wanted to say I support this and I hope it passes. Thank, Thank you. you. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. My name is Jeff St. Cyr, and uh, for the purpose of my discussion, I'm going to show you something on the slide for here. So when you look at this building proposal, uh, that's a correct one, Carl. When you look at this building proposal, we have eight modular classrooms here at Alton Central School. That's eight. There's one located out the front of the school, where the so-called lobby is as you walk in as if you were a parent, then the long walkway up to uh, the lobby of the school, and we have three out back. Ladies and gentlemen, as I said, we have eight classrooms. If this building proposal, as some would like to see, if we were to cut out the third story, the only thing that this building proposal would do if we cut out the third story is bring those eight modular classrooms inside the building. That's great. I think we want to get the modulars out and get the students inside of the building. That's what I would like to see as a board member. But what I cannot say is if we're going to spend $18 million for a building renovation for Alton Central School to bring eight modular classrooms inside of that building and have no additional space would be a lack of foresight on the members of this community. To say that we're not going to have the foresight to say, yes, Alton may expand, that's potential here in this town. But to say that we're not going to support this project because of a, a third floor of eight classrooms would be foolish on the part of us as board members and foolish on the part of this community. As you look at this plan, down at the bottom, there's a spot where there are eight classrooms on that lower, lower corner where it's gray and red, represents the third floor. As you will see under this plan, three of those classrooms out of eight will be used. Why? Because we need the space at all the central school. And if we didn't have that, we'd have to restructure other space within Alton Central School in order to only have two stories. Ladies and gentlemen, we cannot build out at Alton Central School. If we build out, what goes? The playground, athletic fields, parking space? You've all been to Alton Central School. Look at the parking situation we have. Ladies and gentlemen, the only thing we can do is go up. And if we're going to go up, we might as well go up three stories in order to have the appropriate space 
because we, A, we need the space, but also for future expansion. I don't believe those five classrooms extra are going to be completed and renovated at this time. The infrastructure necessary will be in place, of course, electrical, maybe lighting, walls. We need those. If we're going to spend the $18 million now, we might as well do it right, have the amount of money there, and have the classroom space that we need, fully knowing that Alton is a growing community. Look at Alton. Why do we live here? Because it's a great place to live. And there are some in this community who are concerned that people might move into this community. I don't see why that would be concerned. Look at Route 28A. There are houses being built that have not been built there in the last, since 1994, when I have officially moved to this community. I challenge you to go up in Route 28A, up near where I live. You'll see four or five new buildings being built. Why? Potentially people are moving to this community, and that's a great thing. Alton is a great place to live, and I don't think anybody will deny that. In 2007, members of the Alton School Board tried going after three parcels located around this building. That did not pass. That was about a million dollars for land. So without the additional land, we can't grow out. We have to go up. And common sense will tell us we're not going to put out 10 plans on one warrant article. Why? Because there's a threshold of 60% that is needed to pass a building warrant article or a bond vote. If you put out two proposals, you have a fear of saying 50% of the community supports one, 50% of the community supports number two. You're left with nothing. This board and the Building and Grounds Committee has gotten behind one plan after numerous surveys out